you can see the screen, right? Let's start with the uh, and to wrap. So we're gonna talk about what data annotation means and how useful it is for structuring our data. So like it could be ready for um machine learning model training or fine tuning if for any purpose you want. So let's just go. So before we go to uh, the introduction part. Uh, what are the effects of passing unstructured data to the machine, uh, to the modules to train? Uh, one of the big effects that we will cause would be inaccurate model response. So uh, the accuracy of the model responsing for any question we ask it would be too, too low if we pass it unstructured data or data as it is. So the machine, the model will be unreliable, and uh, you know this effect will happen if we don't have uh, structured data. So annotations will fix this kind of errors. Will uh, help us to get more accurate model responses. So if you go to the annotation definition, annotation data means is a process of labeling, tagging, or adding metadata. It could be one of these things or all of these things, depending on the data and the information that we want to pass to a raw data to make it understandable by the models. So at the end of the day, models or machines are just machines. They need, uh, they automatically don't detect what the data contains and be perfect. They need human involvement. So annotation is is done by humans. We structure the data, we label it or add tag or metadata to make more descriptive the data we pass to use. the machine learning. The more descriptive it is, the more the machine, the model would be reliable, would be would be able to answer accurate responses for user questions. So that is what we are doing when we annotate data. That's exactly what we're doing. We add labels or tags or metadata that can be more descriptive of the particular raw data. So data annotation it is even a, a, a job position. There are data annotators out there that do this part of a uh, field as a data annotator. So they it's a human activity of tagging content, such as text, photo, videos, if you have all this combined, we label them uh, so that machine learning models can better recognize those data and use them to generate predictions. So this is the main idea between data annotation. It's a human activity that we do. So for example, if we have this uh, image and we want to train the model through different images, and let's say the project we're doing is either to there is a drone who has who uses who relies on an LLP or sensor or just forget the drone. Let's say there is a self-driving car that has uh, that relies on LLP and sensors to make accurate decision. It might need information of previous traffic flows, everything what a traffic look like. So the self-driving car can make a, a good prediction and move on the road. So for that, when we give that data to the NLP that can be used by self-driving car, we have to label this picture as much as we can. So it can understand the flow of a traffic, what looks like, what a road looks like, what uh, what happens after, what exists in this one on the right, on the left. Just everything we have to uh, make it as descriptive as, as possible in our data set for the model to understand so, so that it can give a good prediction for the self-driving cars not to cause any trouble. So this is what data annotation does. So this is what the annotators do. They will make the data set as descriptive as possible by adding different extension to the data. And those extensions can help the machine learning to be more accurate in prediction. So there are different types of annotations. 
the major ones are text annotation, image annotation, audio annotations, and the fourth one, video annotation. These are the most common data types. So in text annotation, when we annotated text data, what we what we might decide to annotate it with might be the text meaning. It might be different. The context of the text uh, that we have on our data set might depend on the semantic meaning or might depend on the intent of that text for what that text states, might depend on sentiment uh, because in text, the machine learning doesn't know directly if that text is a positive text or bad or a neutral or a negative uh, meaning text. So annotating that text in those forms when we model, when we train our model can help it to better, uh, to be better in predictions and others. There are different aspects that we can look for in text uh, when we annotate it. So it depends on the use case of the project, of course. Uh, the image annotation, we might look for image classifications uh, inside the image that we have, the object recognition or uh, emotion analysis. Maybe we are we are doing analysis or training a model to understand emotion on an image, sad, happy. It could be anything, depending on the use case. Or key point detections, for example, on those objects that exist on the image, they might be landmarks that exist. So we might be able to fetch those landmarks and just pass the data for the model so it can understand what actually the image is uh, referring or and make a good prediction that future when a question is uh, asked to it. So for audio annotation, maybe we annotate the audio data, the raw audio data we have on the language, uh, on the speaker dem demographics, on the dialects, on those audios, on the mode of those audio sounds, on the intent emotion behavior, the same, all of them, depending on your project, you might have different types of that you might make different types of data annotation on the raw data. For video annotation, video annotation and image annotation has similarity because video is also a combination of images, right? It's a frame. Uh, combination of image frames are the ones that create video. So the same kind of uh, concept will go with the video annotation. So these are the, the major types of annotation that we can do to our data types. So one of the advantage of data annotation, so uh, training machine learning models. Yes, uh, sorry, the advantage of data annotation, the one is for training machine learning models. Uh, it plays a crucial role in supervised machine learning models to create annotation on our data will give uh, that advantage. It can play, it can make the module to predict well. Uh, it can improve, like we said uh, so far, it will improve the module performance. Uh, it can uh, it can have a test specific customization, which means it can be specific based on the use cases that we are using the module for. So the more specific we are on the data, based on our use cases, the more the module will be task specific for responding uh, or predicting outputs. The domain knowledge incorpor incorporation would be the other advantage that we get from annotating a data. Uh, annotating data often involves expertise in domain knowledge of human annotators. Incorporating domain knowledge through annotation enhances the model. Understanding a performance is just the same thing. It will uh, improve the model's performance, transfer learning and reusability. So once a data is structured, accurately annotated and put in some data warehouse or whatever we put it in, it can be, uh, we can reuse it for different purposes. It just will make our job easier when it comes to a training a model, or it can benefit a lot of things. And you have this annotated data, structured data, that's ready to be reused for any purpose. So annotating 
the data can help uh, a lot in machine learning. So what are the possible tools that can help with data annotation? So these tools provides you a user interface that allows annotators to interact with the data and apply notation. So uh, they will give you the user interface to, uh, to interact with your data so you can get the idea of uh, annotations for the data. So these tools, uh, the Prodigy is used for text annotation. Uh, they just help us. They help us that can just help annotators. In this project, you are the, you guys will be the annotators that can help to structure the data more better for the machine learning. Uh, these three D viewpoints and others they are also others to that helps in image annotation, video annotation. So uh, the tools have. Uh, will be used for different purposes. So you can check them out. Uh, the conclusion that uh, is, I'm going to say about data annotation is the goal of data annotation in general is to create a clean and structured data that can be used to train machine learning models and improve their accuracy. So that's the purpose that is uh, the idea behind data annotation. It's a simple concept. You just have to do it, implement it in your data. So it can, with that annotation, an AI model would allow the data it receives where audio, video, takes graphics, or combination of formats. So uh, it can help uh, with training model, with structuring the data. So this is a short tutorial, but this is the idea behind data annotation. It's a human activity that you have to do on your data. Uh, you can use the tools for better, uh, for playing, for manipulating data, for understanding the data. So you can get uh, ideas of possible annotation that you can uh, put on your data. It could be, like we said, it could be a label, it could be a tag that you put or a metadata that have detailed information about the data. So. Uh, this is the idea between uh, behind that annotation. So, if you have question, uh, you can go ahead and ask. Okay, is it clear? I think it's clear, right? What the purpose is. Abdurrahman. Uh, it's clear. Uh, it's clear. But uh, uh, should we all the data we we collect have a meaning? For example, sometimes I can collect just uh, names of products or anything. Uh, how I can annotate these things? Um, I'm sorry. If I could you repeat the last part? You have a, what kind of data? Uh, I mean, uh, the data we are collecting, we are collected, uh, are not always have a meaning for, uh, for example, it's not always sentence that have a meaning. Maybe I collect uh, some uh, product names uh, written in Amharic, so how I can annotate this type of data? So it's the data that you get, um, not a text? So you're saying the data that you have is not going to be sentiment? If it's not a text, it would be audio or video, right? I, I don't understand when you say uh, if it's not the type of data you mention as an example of grammar. Uh, OK, it's a text, but uh, I mean, uh, uh, annotati uh, annotation can be done for for a sentence that have a meaning, am I right? So I can say this uh, negative or positive sentence. So what if I'm um, just uh, collected uh, uh, any products names uh, in in uh, Amharic? How I can annotate this? 
I mean, let's say you, whatever the data that you just mentioned, if you pass it to the model, do you think it would understand it? I'm Seriously, I, I'm not sure. Yeah, that's the thing. The model, uh, for example, for the image that I just showed here, let's see here. If you pass any image like this to the ML, uh, to the model and train it, and make it, uh, ask them to predict so where the self-driving car should go, it wouldn't know it because I have to mention, I, I can see on the data there is a traffic light, there is car, there are people, but if I told the on my data annotation, there is a, from the traffic lights are found from the road in this distance, that's an information, right? The model will not be able to get by just having the image as a, as a, as a data. So if I could be, it depends on the use case, the data, the data annotation. But if I can be specific, what the distance between the traffic light and the road is, where these cross lines are found from the road, it can help the, the machine learning model to predict more accurately for the self-driving car. So, so if you get on this distance, there's some traffic light, the traffic light will get, you get it right. So it depends on the data, whatever the Amharic data that you get, for what purpose are you using it? You have to first answer that. So if you know the purpose, it can help you to get to the annotation part, what kind of annotation that I, I could give the data. So just after you have the data, just imagine it. What, what uh, this data, what, for what purpose can it be used? And what kind of tags or label that I should give it for the LLA uh, to make job easier for the LLA. So and you, at the end of the day, you have to understand the data that you have, then uh, it will be easier. OK, uh, thank you. Any other question? Dereji? Okay, so just I'm looking at some data uh, that has uh, maybe, that has a title uh, related to politics or maybe other products. So just, uh, I think it is easy to label this, uh, text as product or maybe other things but if you wanted to just annotate the details of data like uh, entities so are you going to annotate such kind of data on this project yes uh, for example for the data types you said labeling seems perfect for it so it contain politics kind of uh, topics it could get the label politics as a label, right? So the others yeah. who are not made of politics will get another label name. It means you then mm -hmm. a data annotation for that particular data. Okay, what about entities? Just uh, for example, if you uh -huh. take products, Product. So there is a product type, electronics or other things. So are you going to just uh, annotate entities also? It's not yeah. not only intent. Yes, not only intent. Entities takes classification. Uh, there's a lot of factors you can annotate the data. So if there are entities, you can classify them based on their entity type. those products can be electronics uh, different types of products exist right so if the use case is training the uh, email model for products those products can have an entity labeling hope that clears up uh, clear it up yeah okay i did think Okay, um, any other question? Okay, can, can I get the reactions that you get the idea between data annotation and what you have to do on your data? If you don't have 
question that all right Um, so as you see, it's a clear concept. There is nothing much we can say about it. It's a human activity. You have maybe you will do it manually. The annotation part based on the data. Uh, to see if the tools can help you as well. So uh, if you don't have any question, you can use the time for discussion with your group mates. Okay, so I'm gonna end the tutorial. Thank you for joining in. If you have questions as well as you can reach out to us on the Slack.